Dark Cast Network. The light shines brightest on our indie podcasts. Hi, this is Kelly. And this is Jenna. And you're listening to ODFN. This episode is One Diarrhea Mouth for Murder. So we got to give a shout out to a listener's band who is touring 17 states. I think she said, let's see, um, Adam, his metal band. Oh yeah. Oh, they're going through nine states. Sorry. I don't know. I'm just inflating the number in my mind. Like, yes, 50 states. Oh wait, it's nine states, but still. That's eight more states than I've ever Right? Played. So, there you go. Well, see, <laughs> uh, his band's called Singularity. Oh, Singularity. Okay, yes. cool. They're a metal band. And for those in Colorado, he's going to be in May. Or no, he's going to be in Denver. He's going to be in May. <laughs> he's going to be Denver, May 16th at the Trailside Saloon. So catch him there. But awesome. um, yeah, nine other states if you want to look him up. Singularity. That's awesome. So shit out. Go see Singularity. Go see Singularity. Are you ready? I mean, this is a this is a seatbelt moment because it's a seatbelt type of show. This is deep dive. You're not going to be able to not comment as I'm reading some of this to you. Okay, not because I was I was yelling at the TV. So, (laughs) (laughs) bitch. Right, and scaring the dog. So yeah. Anyway, that's a good thing to do. And you may know, you may have heard of this case before. I had not, but even if I've had, I've probably forgot about it. So I didn't know all these fun details because I dug up all kinds of awesome stuff. Okay, here we go. (gasps) Exciting. So on Friday, October 12th, October, and it's not Friday the 13th yet. No, it was the 12th. Okay. (laughs) If it had been the 13th, shit really would have gone down. I mean, it really (laughs) would have been way worse. Okay. Yeah. Friday, October 12th, 2012. A 911 operator in Campbell County, Kentucky, gets a call from a frantic woman who says, and, you know, this is this is the South. So, you know, they're very polite. She she starts out with ma'am, because that's how you address it when you're panicked. Ma'am, (laughs) ma'am, ma'am, I killed my boyfriend in self-defense. Dispatcher says, what did you kill him with? Woman responds, a gun, a loaded gun in the house. Dispatcher, tell me, where is the gun right now? Woman. The gun is in the house. I laid it on the bookshelf. Dispatcher. Where are you? Woman. I'm standing about 10 feet from his dead body. Oh, my. Right? So <laughs> oh. you're sure he's dead. I right. take it. So, literally, that's the next line. Dispatcher. <laughs> are you sure he's dead? And she says, yes, he's dead, ma'am. He's completely dead. <laughs> I don't kill that. He is. Yeah, he is uh, done. That's awesome. Okay. So the dispatcher says, OK, how long ago did you shoot him? And she says, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 minutes, not even that long. Which seems a little long. That seems a little long. Right? To wait to. uh, I went and made a sandwich and then I came back. I had to pee. I mean, I almost had my pants. Exactly. You know, I I mean, bathroom. Okay. Dispatcher, what's your name? Shana Michelle Hubers. The dispatcher tells Shana to stay on the phone and officers will be arriving soon. Shana says, are they going to arrest me? I mean, I'm not a murderer, ma'am. I just killed him in self-defense. So, <laughs> But you still <laughs> murdered him. I mean. Right. I didn't. No, yeah. I'm not. Ma'am. 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 I'm not a murderer. <laughs> I'm being polite here. Okay. <laughs> ma'am. I killed him, but I'm not a killer. So the dispatcher asks Shana what happened. Shana says, oh, I just killed him in self-defense. Dispatcher asks what happened. Oh, I think she asked if she needed an ambulance. Sorry. Oh, okay. And she, Shana says. I'm not injured, ma'am. I was thrown into the side of the couch. So the dispatcher said, so he slammed you into the couch, but you don't have any injuries? Shana says, I don't have any injuries. I was just very frightened. He's a lot bigger than me. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. I'm 5'8", 120. Must be nice. Um, yeah. Sorry, that was my side note. <laughs> like, <Okay>. um, <laughs> so was um, I 20 years ago. Right, yes. exactly. <laughs> and he he picked me up and threw me out of the house and said, and I said, let me get my things at least if we're going to break up. And he wouldn't let me get my things. 
And when I reached around and tried was to get it my a bag of dildos. Sorry, the wrong. That's episode. legit. Oh, oh. wrong episode. Okay. <laughs> it feels like expensive, back. yo. <laughs> okay. When I reached around and tried to get my things, he threw me across the room, and I was very startled. I was lying on the floor. Dispatcher, ma'am, are you sure he's not breathing at all? Shayna, he's dead, ma'am. He's completely dead. <laughs> No, I made sure he's not breathing. Ma'am, the amount of time she said ma'am is like, it's ridiculous. Ma'am, and then because he was twitching and I knew he was going to die anyway, and he was making funny noises, (gasps) I shot him a couple more times. I told you. Just to kill him because I knew he would have been. Yeah, you're dying and you look miserable. Do you want me to kill you? Right. Okay. I told you I had to read this verbatim. Okay. The ditch, the dispatcher even says, I'm, I'm sorry. You said you shot him a couple more times after that. (laughs) Well, he was twitching. I mean, what do you do? (laughs) Shayna sobbing. Yes. I, I, you know, and the dispatcher says, how many times did you shoot him total? (laughs) And Shayna sobbing. I don't know. Dispatcher. Okay. Because he was twitching and you knew he was going to die, so you shot him again. <laughs> Just right. I gotta make like, sure I got this wait, right. It, it, you really meant to shoot him again. Shana wow. says, not to make sure he was dead, but because he was twitching so bad and I didn't want to watch him lay there and twitch. So she meant lay there and suffer, maybe? But I she guess. Couldn't but she little- didn't want him dead. <laughs> She just wanted him to stop. It was bothering stop her. Stop twitching. Right. It's like people that eat really loudly. <laughs> yes, You're exactly. Like, oh, stop my trying. God. Yeah. So you shoot them. <laughs> As one that, does. Oh, man. I would have killed so many people by now. If that right. was the case. No. So the dispatcher says, so you shot him instead of calling 911? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just want to clarify. Ma'am. <laughs> and Shana goes, what? Yeah, I did, because I knew he was going to die anyway. So oh, let's, just, oh. let's just speed this shit up. I got things to do. <laughs> I got a life to live. I, I was going to save you guys the bills. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. hospital bills can be a lot. So That was just the 911 call. Wow, <laughs> uh, this girl. Oh, so, Shana. Let me, let me go back and give you a little, little background a little, little story history. to go with to what the F just happened. Why Shana feels like she needs <laughs> to shoot somebody. Okay. For twitching. For twitching, right. It's almost like twerking. Maybe I'd that's shoot somebody why. for twerking. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why. She's like, God, your twerk right. is so bad. Please God, stop. so awful, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay, so Shayna Michelle Hubers was a 19-year-old college student. Oh, hi, Blue. Oh, hi, Blue. What's going down? She's giving the shake. Okay. Oh, she was twerking. <gasps> Were you twerking? Oh, oh hi. Oh, you're such a good twerker. Oh, you're so good. All right. Sorry. Okay. So Shana Michelle Hubers was a 19 year old college student um, from Lexington, Lexington. Kentucky. Yeah, that place. Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, when she met Ryan Poston in the spring of 2011 uh, through Facebook. Oh, so he was 28. Wow. Older man. Yes. He was 28 and a lawyer. Oh, hello. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And- and side note, hot as hell. Oh, oh my God. The guy was fine. So no he wonder. He was a lawyer. Uh, yeah. Living more than 80 miles away in Highland Heights, Kentucky. So they were not even really new. Okay. It was like a good two hour drive. That's okay. He's okay, a lawyer. Right. Right? He's <laughs> right. We'll, we'll make it. We'll and make his it name's work. Ryan. It makes me think Ryan Reynolds. So mm, yes. there you go. Yep. Yep. Mm. So uh, Shayna was friends with Ryan's step cousin, Carissa Carlisle. Oh, how convenient. So that's okay, how so that's he how saw her on Facebook, right? And he saw pictures of her on Facebook. And she, I mean, she's very pretty. Mm-hmm. She's blue eyes, big blue eyes, uh, long, like brunette hair, like chocolate mm-hmm. brown. Yes. Yeah, um, big, pretty smile. I mean, she was, she was, she was, she was beautiful, right? Adorable. Yes. They, they were looks wise. They, they were equal. They like, went to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they were no on the one same, was, in the same league. <laughs> Yes, there you go. They were in the same <laughs> They were league. both in the same league. Okay, yes. gotcha. Shayna grew up in Lexington. In high school, she was an honor student with awards for academic excellence and leadership. She graduated cum laude in only three years from the University of Kentucky. Okay, so she's pretty smart, too. She was yes. a, mm-hmm. she she had, a dummy. No, she had a degree in psychology, and now she was working on her master's degree in school guidance counseling. 
Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. So very ambitious, successful, smart. And then Ryan Carter Poston, also not a bad catch, let me tell you. Yeah. He was born in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, into a very tight-knit family. He had three younger sisters, very close to his dad. This, I thought, was a really cool thing. It really kind of speaks to his character. So okay. he was really close to his dad, but his parents broke up when he was really young. And his mom remarried, and he actually grew really close to his stepfather. Um, and they actually all were able to get like, along. Go to functions together. Yes. And, okay. Wow. And... Ryan wanted to somehow honor the fact that his stepdad was also a male role model in his life that yeah. he loved. And so he had his middle name changed legally to his stepfather's last name. Wow. So that's how he got Aww. the middle name Carter, which I thought was really that's cute. Right. That's, I was that's like, huge. That's a, right. So that kind of tells you like what kind of guy. He, totally. So he was good looking he was caring. He was, yeah, he yeah like I was like, dang. A freaking perfect man. Oh, yeah. So he was clean cut, dark hair, mm. light eyes, killer smile. Like, um, th- like McDreamy and McSteamy, those words oh, come to mind. Yes. He was a good looking guy, uh. right? So maybe that's why I did the story. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> You're like, this guy's hot. I'm just going right. to do the just, story. Yeah, this what what happened to this? Okay. Right. Also, this guy was no slouch either. During high school, he attended Blessed Sacrament School in Fort Mitchell. Then the International School Manila in the Philippines, and then the International School of Geneva in Switzerland. This was Holy all high school. This is this high was, school. This was high school. I was thinking these were colleges. Like no, he's... that was wow. high school. Okay. Then he went to Indiana University, where he triple majored <laughs> in history, geography, and political science. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then he went to law, sto- law school at Northern Kentucky University in Highland you Heights. You almost said law stool. Law stool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a whole different kind of It's because stool. I've been paying attention to the Amber Heard Johnny Depp <laughs> it's the trial stool. too much. I can't. <laughs> Me poo. Me poo. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening too. Me poo. Sorry. <laughs> so he went, he went to law school, right? So, and then he completed his Juris Doctor degree. I, I don't even know what that is. That's like well above so my... So it must be the Doctorate of Law. Of kind Law. Of. Wow. This guy is 29 or 28 <laughs> at this point. Tw- I feel so right? under underachieved. <laughs> so I feel like I... Right <laughs> I feel... I'm such a failure, mama. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm like... Not, I'm, I'm quite a bit older than him and I can't even not make poop jokes on a podcast. Okay. So that's where we're at right now. So, so I feel, feel a little under, mm-hmm. underwhelmed by my life mm-hmm. at this point. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. After he earned his doctorate degree in law, he began working as an attorney in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. Okay. Right. So you would think this very attractive, intelligent, goal oriented couple would be like this phenomenal match right i mean like you know the kind of people where you're like i hate them you know but their 18 month relationship was far from perfect much like amber heard i was just gonna say this is like the same amount of time what are you (laughs) that is weird interesting comes full circle Mm -hmm. and also two very good looking accomplished people right maybe good looking and accomplished Two of them together is too much, of, and it becomes like a right. counter pig, counter pig, counter keg. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel better by doing that. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I totally meant okay. to. Okay. Whew. According to Ryan's friends, Shayna was intense. Mm, fun. Ob- obsessed. Ryan, he liked her, but he was really busy. He was actually in the process of starting his own law firm with a partner. Oh, whoa. How does he even have time to date? Yeah. Uh, Right. So like I said, he's 28. He just finished all this school, right? And he's just (sighs) getting started into the world here, right? And he's starting his own law firm. Okay. And, you know, she's going into um, graduate school, but she's already like, I want to settle down. I want to get married. I want to, you know. And again, she's 19. Yeah. Oh, my God. Girl, you've got time. It's probably why he was dating a 19-year-old. He was like, I'm no not looking for anything, okay? <laughs> oh, let's just, just have fun right? for a while. Right? Wow. According to Ryan's friends, he tried to break things off with Shayna several times, but had 
difficulty with hurting her feelings, oh, breaking so up with sweet. her. Yeah, because he's a nice he's a mm, nice guy. He's a nice guy. And Shayna didn't like to take no for an answer. Oh shit! Right. So Shayna actually sent a text to one of her friends saying, "He says he's only with me because I make him feel so awful about it when I cry. My love has turned to hate." Wow. That's romantic. Might be time to step back. Right. Yeah, and it's yet. time to just. Yeah. Oh, and yet she doesn't. She answers. And yet it up. she doesn't. And yet yes. she's like, oh, good. So he cares. <laughs> I'm going to double down. Let's, exactly. I'm just going to double down on this. Oh, exactly. No. So even though Ryan lived almost two hours away, Shayna would randomly show up at Ron- oh, Ryan's no. condo. No. No. Mm-hmm. Please don't. That's going to make him like her least, oh less. Oh, my God. Like, right, stop yeah. it. Like, there's like, oh, what a nice surprise. And there's like, oh, what a nice surprise <sighs> again. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like, okay, this right. now you make it so I don't want to be around you at all. <laughs> I oh. keep picturing wedding crashers with <laughs> Isla Fisher. I'll find you. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, God. She was oh, awesome in that role. She was so good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there was a text that Ryan sent to his cousin Carissa, the one who knew Shayna. Right, right. And in the text it said, (laughs) kind of, said, this is getting to be restraining order level crazy. Wow. I'm not kidding. You need to talk to her. She needs help. And I say that without exaggeration. She just really needs help. Oh, no. I think he kind of felt bad for her, too. But like. Still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's off the deep end. In another text, he said, she's shown up at my condo like three times and refuses to leave each time. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> that's wackadilly. Like, that's like um, almost middle school stuff, maybe. I mean, it's not yeah, really definitely. It's two hours. Like, you don't just pop over. Yeah, it's not just house when it's two hours. I mean, Ugh, But yikes. she's like, but then I drove two hours. Can I just Right. Stay? So then he's like, well, you come in, you know. Uh, it's, but it's God. four in the morning and I drove two hours. <gasps> Psycho. <laughs> right. Go get a, oh, go get a hotel. Oh, God. Yeah. In a Facebook message to a friend, okay. Ryan wrote, literally, probably the craziest fucking person I have <gasps> ever met. She almost scares me. Oh, no. Okay, that's, that's yeah. cemented. Yeah. Right? Shayna even became friends with one of Ryan's neighbors. Her name was Nikki Carnes. According to Nikki, oh, no. Shayna was always doing things for Ryan. She was like the perfect girlfriend, according to Nikki. Shayna would take out his dog. She'd do his laundry, bring him food. And I guess the two of them got to be, you know, friendly. And so Shayna told Nikki that Ryan was emotionally abusive. Oh, God. Nikki said, Shayna would always tell me that he would say that she needed a boob job or a facelift and that she was Whoa. fat and needed to lose weight. <laughs> Doesn't sound like him, but I guess you never know behind doors. But... Exactly. So it's like, okay, well, that would, yeah. Okay. That I, would suck. Although I really find that hard to believe with a guy who grew up with three younger sisters. Exactly. That, you know, when you first brought up that he grew up with sisters, I was like, oh, how wonderful. Because right. Because they understand women a lot more. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know. Okay. So, you know, this happened in October of 2012. Okay. Also around that time, Ryan began talking to somebody else on Facebook. Uh-oh. Because, you know, he was trying to get rid of Shayna. He was like, yeah. I need to distance myself. But, you know, he was still an attractive guy, yeah, right? absolutely. Okay. So he was talking to a woman named Audrey. I don't know if it's Bolt or Bolty. I think it's Bolty. Audrey Bolty, who happens to be Miss Ohio USA 2012. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, and he was also in her league. Okay? <laughs> right. This so was not got, a stretch. These are all the high leaguers. Yeah. Top, top <laughs> exactly. leaguers. Okay. Exactly. This is the top shelf in the bar. Yes. This is, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> these are them. Okay. Right. Gotcha. So, they had actually, so they had talked on Facebook and they had actually set a date to meet up at a bar. On the night of Friday, October 12th, 2012. But okay. Ryan didn't show up. Yeah. Being that he was dead and all. It, oh, he I didn't quite shot. make it. Yeah. Yeah. He's got oh, a pretty good excuse. No. So, he does. Yeah, he's got a pretty, I mean, you got to <laughs> give him that. I'm never going to see him again. Right, exactly. Wait. 
Nobody stands up Miss Ohio. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm really not ever going to see him again. Oh, God. At 8.53 p.m., Shayna called 911 and had said that she shot Ryan in self-defense after they got into an argument and he began throwing her around the condo. Just... He's you know, just, right. <laughs> she is, she is tiny. You can just, she is tiny. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Ryan was shot six times with his own handgun. So she emptied it. Oh, like, she emptied she it. Emptied yes. it on him. He, he, he got shot twice in the head, <gasps> once in the back, once under an arm, and then twice in his chest. Jesus. Once in the back. It's like he, she's like spinning him around. He's, right, exactly. Wait, He's doing like the alligator roll out of the right. door. <laughs> and she's just, you know, unloading the gun. Right. Jesus. Beautiful. I mean, uh, Ryan, Ryan. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> Ryan. Ryan. Was only 29 years old. God dang it. I know. And such he, a future. Oh God my, right? Her. I know. So Lieutenant Dave Fornash and his partner were the first to arrive on the scene from the 911 call. He was actually not very far away when it came in. So he got there really quick. So he's like, all right. As he entered the condo, he could see Ryan's body on the floor in the dining room, just behind the dining room table. I have pictures of the condo. It, you know, he was 29. He was successful. He was very much a single man in a bachelor pad. Oh, okay. Nothing was really (laughs) matchy-matchy. It's all just Um, whatever I picked up. Exactly. Nothing really went. It was, it was messy. It was messy. But it was sparsely decorated. So right. it was like, was it really messy or was it not really messy? You <laughs> know what I mean? There just wasn't a place to put anything because there was no tables there was, and right, drawers. There was nowhere and, to yeah. put anything. Mm-hmm. Right. But also, like, if the place had been filled with furniture and all that shit would have been around, it would have been like, wow, this is messy. But since yeah. there was not a lot of but stuff, the, it yeah. was like, hmm, it's like you know, there's just nowhere to put anything. Right. It was it was Maybe a bachelor pad. Yeah. Get some drawers. Um, this also, there was a spare bedroom that was dedicated to his ties. Oh, it's just, they're just <laughs> lined hilarious. up against the wall. On the wall. <laughs> kind of like the wigs right? of um, yes. on Schitt's Creek. What was yes, exactly. Um, Moira and her, wall, wigs. her wall of yes. wigs. Exactly. He, yes, he had the wall That's of ties versus exactly. the wall of wigs. And I then like also it. in there, because obviously there wasn't a third bedroom, was an artillery vest because, well, that doesn't go in the living room. So I guess it would go in the tie room. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> ties, ties and artillery. Ties and artillery. Here we right? go. That's hilarious. And then there was a cabinet that had board games okay. on one shelf and then bullets. Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> fun it's, and games. It's it reminds all. me a lot of when I moved in with my husband when we first, before we were married. No, we weren't. No. Um, when we oh, first moved in together no. and like. I went to try to put Sinner. some silver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try to put some silverware away in a kitchen drawer, and I opened it up, and it was just filled with like um, oil change receipts. And I was like, <laughs> "What? Wait, wait, why? 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 <laughs> why is this in the kitchen? This is a such a random, you know." So things were put away, mm-hmm. but kind of yeah. in weird places oh yeah yeah just wherever they decided right there was a whim. cabinet that had nothing but sauces and um um fortune cookies from chinese food there was a <laughs> shelf you just opened a cabinet and there was a shelf i've got all my extra mustard and <laughs> right. Ketchup, right. Do you, packets do you, right do you need some mustard some soy sauce here yeah. allow me to it's, <laughs> like so again it was put away but also like what the hell's happening right yeah, now like yeah you know okay so anyway, so that's, so I related when I saw yes, this like, place. Ah, I was like, yes, I've been to these. Yes. There were prescription bottles in multiple locations. Okay. There was a bookcase uh, that had like you know, books, but then it also had like knickknacks that were like, um, um, what are they called? Uh, not cigars. Um, pipes. You know, like, oh, like old, yes. you know, like the pipes. old man. Yes. Like the old, right. Like a, like a Sherlock tobacco Holmes pipe. pipe. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Tobacco pipe. So they were like pipes. Okay. And there were bullets, bullets, like, and they were like in like height I order. You were say blow ups. No, bullets. I was like, wow. <laughs> on the shelf, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no bullets, and they were like all standing up, oh, and all, you know. Okay. So they're so all that arranged was his like display. that was his like, art, right? So <laughs> what the cops noticed was there didn't seem to be any signs of a struggle. Mm, oh, they were all still lined up. That makes right. sense. Right. So she yeah. was thrown around the condo, but yeah, he perfectly threw her to where she only hit the couch. Right, and where nothing got 
yeah. moved or, right. Wait, okay. don't fall the wrong way. Whoa. Right, exactly, right? So that was, they kind of took note of that. I was like, okay. So Shayna was taken to the Highland Heights police station and brought into an interrogation room. Mm-hmm. And from that point on, shit got weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm just not going to. It got. Oh, no. It was bizarre. Uh-oh, she sounds like she needs help. Okay. Yeah. So in the police video, Lieutenant Fornash brings Shayna into the room and he asks if she smokes. And her response is, I will if I can, which is just kind of weird. <laughs> I'll take whatever I can get. Right. Smoke what you got? if you got him. Yeah. <laughs> like, what weird. are you offering? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God. Seriously. <laughs> As he starts to leave, she starts making like crying noises or like whimpering. And so he stops. It's like the little kid where you yes. don't look their way. <laughs> they so, got to check to see if you're looking. Okay. He says, I'll be right back. You're fine. And as soon as he walks out, the noises stop immediately. <gasps> and she's like inspecting her fingernails. Oh, oh. I, I kid you not. For a really bright girl. Wow. Who obviously has seen television. Right. They take Maybe this not shit, man. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a camera. She, uh, right? she ain't jail smart, yo. Apparently she's never seen the first 48. I mean, that's all that's right. on that show. I, I mean, mean, yeah. She needs to watch more TV. Obviously. She's been studying too much. She should have been watching Law yeah, and Order and shit. See, that's what so. she was missing out on. Mm-hmm. So when he returns, Lieutenant Fornash reads Shayna her Miranda rights and says, and she immediately says, I do want a lawyer. Ooh. Good for okay. you. Okay. First smart thing she's done. Lieutenant Fornash replies, okay, so I can't ask you any questions at all. And he just like says it like a statement, right? Okay. okay. So I can't ask you any questions at all. But then she just starts talking. Oh, okay. He literally did not yeah. ask her a question. He just said, okay, so I can't ask you any questions. She talks and talks Ooh. and talks yes. for nearly three hours without a single question being asked. Oh, God. She's one of those. <laughs> Just right? won't shut up. Blah, 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 blah. Just diarrhea of the mouth. And she asked for a lawyer. And she she just didn't know what that meant. No. <laughs> right. I want one. Good. Then you zip your lip until they get here. <laughs> you had one, but you killed him. Right. Remember? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> Excellent point. I do know a really good lawyer. Oh, damn, I but he's dead. He's indisposed. <laughs> oh, man. You done fucked up, girl? Yeah. So she starts with just just to the guy, just to the cop who's in a crossroad, just just I was so out of it. I was like, it's in self-defense, but I killed him. And can you come to the scene? Like she's relaying what wow. she t- said to the 911 dispatcher without anyone asking her what she said to the. Uh, yeah. And she just like she'd go quiet for a minute and then she'd just say something and then she'd go quiet like she was having like this whole inner monologue thing but out loud damn yeah so she makes that comment then she just yeah then she just says i was raised really really christian and murder is a sin yeah that is correct Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's against the law right also right also against the law (laughs) at one point lieutenant fornash leaves and a female officer comes and sits with shana again doesn't ask her any questions, just oh comes in just with, and yeah. sits down. Shayna is like, you have really pretty teeth. Did you have orthodontia? Oh. <laughs> What's happening oh, right now? Yes, what? Invisalign. How'd you know? I know. What? My parents are going to be so happy that you noticed yeah. because <laughs> they these spent like $6,000 right? on these. Right. Yes. Then she's just kind of wondering out loud to herself, if you go to jail, are you allowed to keep your phone? Can you? Can she you? She really sh- hasn't watched any of this. No, TV. she has not. I no, mean, seriously. Sorry. No. She goes, Can you shower there or do you just get like really dirty? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then yeah. like a pause and then she goes, I have to shower in front of people. Oh, shit. <laughs> Whoa. Girl, yeah. maybe you sh- you, she should have had this like thought train way ahead of time of doing this. <laughs> oh my God. Like, right. Yeah. Later, she asks a male cop that comes in to sit with her. Mm -hmm. She asks, what are they going to do with me? And he answers, I don't know. They just told me to come in here and sit with you. Like, literally, that's what he's (laughs) saying. Like, every, it's my turn because nobody else wants to do it. They were literally, like, tagging each other. Like, dude, I did 45 Uh, minutes. I'm I'm out. I gotta, I can't listen to her babble anymore. I gotta, (laughs) I gotta get out, right? Yeah, I know some people like that. She just spoke to whoever was in the room. 
Nobody asked. It was all videotaped. Nobody oh, asked her shit. <laughs> so she just kept <laughs> la 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 la. They forced me to say it all. Oh my gosh! Right. So to one officer, she says he keeps a lo- he keeps loaded guns in the house. He had picked up a gun, pointed it to my face as a joke. What would you do if I and then like makes her hand like she's gonna oh, shoot somebody? Wow. So, but I don't. Again, I don't know who she's telling this to. Is she right. telling this to the cop that's in the room? She's yeah. Just what? Fucking. Uh, right. Okay. To another officer, she said. He's pulled guns on me as jokes before, and I shot him in self-defense because he's done stuff before where I've, like, hit my head on a headboard, and I could have died. <clears throat> he did. Yeah. Dumb shit. Dimwit. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, like, oh, my God. It's crazy. Wow. At, an, at another point, she says, and then this look came out of his eyes. He was, like, capable of anything. I think I told you he takes a lot of drugs. What? <laughs> No, you forgot that part. No, I don't remember you mentioning that Mm-mm. part. Maybe you said it to the two cops ago. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, wait a minute. Right. Let me check their notes. <sighs> and then, like, the random comments would still come in. At one point, she was like, I have two papers due Monday that I haven't. <laughs> well, I guess that um, doesn't matter now. Yeah, you're no. going to miss that. I'm it's sorry. A, I believe yeah. that's, a, that's a viable excuse. That's yeah. A... <laughs> I was in jail. Yeah, I was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, dear. Then... She's kind of sitting there and she kind of starts laughing a bit. Oh. Uh. She's just sitting there and she's like, <laughs> I don't know if anyone will ever want to marry me if they know that I killed a boyfriend in self-defense. Whoa, psycho. Girl, you got bigger things to worry about than yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you might want to. Yeah, you got to probably going to be there a long time. So unless you're okay with jailhouse marriages, mm. which apparently she probably would be. She'd probably love that shit. I'm just going to not comment right oh. now. <laughs> hit on something oh yeah of course okay so in the meantime while she's spewing all this right and the officers are you know just merry-go-rounding in and out of the room (laughs) as they're like i can't do it again don't make me go okay they're coming out going dude i don't get paid enough for this shit i'm out (laughs) i know (laughs) this takes a special kind of that girl's nuts okay police chief bill Birkenhauer is watching everything from a monitor, right? Because they're filming it, but he's also watching oh, it. Oh, this just poor like, guy, he has to watch it all. All the others at least got to leave the room. He's three hours, right? He's like, God. isn't it's there a commercial break? I have to go to the bathroom. I can't. <laughs> Pause it. Pause it. <laughs> so he notes that no tears ever fall from her eyes mm. when she made it look or sound like she was crying. Mm-hmm. He also noticed that her story kept changing slightly here and there, mm-hmm. right? At one point, she says, and he was screaming at me, telling me I was a fucking hillbilly and that he fucking hates me. And I just picked up the gun and in the middle of him doing something with his arm or saying something crazy, I shot him. Doing something with his arm? Waving. Hi. G- oh, throwing what? gang signs? What? What? <laughs> What was he doing? Signs. Waffle. I like charades. the waffle sign. <laughs> he was doing charades. I don't know what's happening. I was just playing charades. Oh, right. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, oh. So then later, she tells another officer, it was a handgun that I used. The gun was this big. I picked it up off the table. I did have to release the safety. I did. I oh, remember oh, now. I can see it in oh, my mind. So she had to sit there and think about it to do it. It's not like it. Exactly. Bang she went had, off. right. It what the safety was still on. But she wow. told the 911 dispatcher that Ryan had grabbed the gun off the table <gasps> and she grabbed it out of his hand. That's right. And she said, he reached down and grabbed the gun and I grabbed it out of his hand and pulled the trigger. Uh, so was it on the table? Okay. Was it in his hand? Was the safety on? Was the safety off? Oof, you got to memorize these details, girl. Well, it also, you know, maybe if you don't tell your story to 18 people and wait for your fucking lawyer, I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, God. No, She's like right. her own worst enemy. So, Oh, absolutely. So this is this is the part. OK. OK. Her description of Ryan's last moments are fucking chilling. Uh Oh, God. This is what she says. He was lying with his face on the table, like twitching. And so I knew he was going to oh, die. My God. And I walked around the table and there's like a little like she makes little like whimpery cry noises. And I think that's when I shot him in the head. I shot him probably six times, shot him in the head. He fell onto the ground. He was like 
laying like this and she gets down on the floor oh to show God. the position. His glasses were still on. He was twitching some more. I shot him a couple more times just to make oh, sure he was okay. dead because I didn't want to watch him die. But you did. I mean, that. But, yeah. But what? But you did. I didn't want to watch him do it slowly. <sighs> I was like, are you serious? Then she admits that she waited at least 10 minutes before calling 911. She had to, like, fix her makeup, probably. Uh, she told police, a part of me wanted to get my keys and get in my car and leave. Because I knew it was going to be my word against his, and he's dead. Wow. You know, how is anyone else to know that it's self-defense, you know? Yeah, maybe you could have let him live so that he could tell his side of the story. There would be that, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh... What she also didn't tell police at this point was... That after she shot Ryan, but before she called 911, she called her mom. <gasps> mom, what should I do? Right. Um, oh. I think I really fucked up this time. <laughs> yeah. And this is not about a paper I forgot to write. Oh, God. <sighs> okay. Mm. Later in the video, she said, I knew he was going to die or have a completely deformed face. He's very oh. vain. <gasps> And wants to get a nose job, which, by the way, he did not need. He was freaking oh, gorgeous. No. But anyway, he wants to get a nose job. Just kind of that kind of person. And I shot him right here, points to his face. <sighs> I gave him his nose job he wanted. Ooh, I broke it. Damn. Jesus. She literally said I gave him a nose job. I... This girl, she right? obviously has something wrong. Oh, my God, right? Mentally, so yeah. It's because of this statement that this case became known as the nose job murder. So that's how it got dubbed. Wow. And Shayna was dubbed the next Jody Arias based mm -hmm. on her actions when she was alone in the interrogation room. Because there were some times when they're all like, nope, I'm tapped out. I got to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me some time. Let yeah. her sit in there by herself. Mm hmm. When she's in there by herself, she gets up and starts to kind of like walk around the table. She's kind of like stretching out her arms Doing and headstands. stuff. Right. She did not do headstands. <laughs> oh, no. But, which by the way, that was fucked up. Okay. That was weird. She kind of stretches out her arms and she's kind of like snapping and she's like, I did it. Yes, <gasps> I did it. I can't even believe I did it. Oh. In like this like singy way. She's like, like a little sing song. Like, I did it. I did it. I can't believe yeah, it. Like, wow. oh, it was weird. Wow. Then she starts to do what look like ballet moves and even does like a little twirl. Oh. I, I shit oh. you not. She twirled. <gasps> and she begins singing Amazing Grace, which, by oh, the way, sounded creepy. phenomenal because oh. she's got a really good voice and like the acoustics in the room were really good. So I was like <laughs> equal parts appalled and kind of and impressed. Kind of like, <laughs> I was like, wow, oh, this girl. Is like a <laughs> Why didn't you, you go into singing? You wasted what? talent. Wasted right? talent. Like, and you wasted his talents. Oh. oh, my God. Seriously. But I was just like, God, that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. she's so then Lieutenant Fornash comes back into the room and tells Shayna she's being arrested for murder. And her response is, what degree? Wow. And he goes, murder. There's no degree. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just going for murder, just murder right now. Right? Her bail is set at $5 million. <gasps> oh, they don't trust her. Well, you know, she made the comments about, I thought about just getting my keys and leaving. Oh. So, uh-huh. And she said that on video. Yes. Oh, so perfect. that was used against her in the bail hearing. Yep. And they were like, mm, you're a flight risk. Anything you say can be held against you. So exactly. don't say shit. Yeah. Exactly. So when police show this video to prosecutor Michelle Snodgrass, yes, that's her name. Oh. Yeah, I've known and Snodgrass. I get she's it. not in Harry Potter as far as I know. <laughs> but that's what it makes me think of. <clears throat> totally. Like the herbology yeah, professor. Yeah, that's so, right. Michelle Snodgrass, she's appalled and says, quote, someone who is in shock does not pirouette. Within yeah. hours of putting six bullets into Ryan Poston and watching him die, she danced and sang. Seriously. Seriously. So, Seriously. Uh, I'm sorry. That's not, that's not shock. That's, no, that's, I don't know what another that is. Well, that's another top shelf of crazy. Mm -hmm. So she's top shelf. Beautiful. She's top, top. She's, she's the bartender. No, the owner's private stash locked uh, away. Yes. That's crazy. what it is. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's beyond the norm. Right. You know? Exactly. So nobody else can reach it. I Maybe. was going to stop here Yeah, because 
there's, there's a lot, lot that just happened. And <laughs> if you thought her police interrogation, which wasn't even an interrogation because they no, didn't ask they her anything. They didn't ask anything. Her, her, her police her, babbling. Well, yeah, it was like a, a um, an acting performance. Her performance. Her, her police performance. performance. Yes. Because, yes, she did. She sang. She danced. She yes. diaried yeah, she, the mouth. Triple threat, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Um, she acts. She dances. She sings. Right? She won't shut up. Uh, yeah. If you think that was crazy, the trial does not get any less oh, crazy. Okay. So thank you all for listening to this much. And oh um, next week, you can hear what happens after this when we find out more crazy. Yay. Oh, Yay. now we're all going to be waiting <laughs> anticipation. <laughs> or if you're like me and is really bad at listening to things once a week and you binge, you'll be like, well, thank God. Yes. Let's go to the next one. Hey, Audis, Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. If you're a longtime listener, hey, we cannot thank you enough for your continued support. And if you're a new listener, thanks for giving us a try. If you like us, please drop us a like, subscribe, or rate us so we can share our stories with more people around the world. And if you'd like more information, like links to our podcast and socials, along with our Patreon fan page, those links are all on Linktree under ODFM Podcast. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash ODFM Podcast. Side note. You guys, we're obsessed with fan art, and we love making things with it, like stickers for our fans. So if you'd like us to use your designs, send it to us at odfmpodcast at gmail.com. And if we use your design, we'll be sure to send you a sticker. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM, hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful. 